In the fantastical shared world of Sea of Thieves, the freedom of the pirate life awaits as players embark on their own epic multiplayer adventures. Our catchily titled Update 0.1 signals the start of the Sea of Thieves technical alpha phase, and with it, some lucky players from our Insider program will get to experience the thrill of the hunt as they sail the seas in search of hidden gold. Few things stoke the fire in a pirate's dark heart like buried treasure. In Update 0.1, there could be riches hidden beneath the sands of any island out there on the open sea. But all great adventures begin with a promise. And that's where our maps come in. When you embark on a treasure quest in this update of the game, you'll have a map to get you sailing in the right direction. In this case, a classic X marks the spot style map. You and your crew will be relying on this map, first to pinpoint the island, then to dig up the treasure. Making this a little bit easier is the map table on your ship. This gives you a wider view of the many islands you can travel to, and your ship's position on the sea. By comparing the islands on both maps like some kind of ingenious pirate detective, you can plot a course and get your treasure hunt underway. Ideally, at some point you'll make it to the right island and face one more test of your crew's cartographic skills to track down the buried stash. There won't really be a giant red X in the sand, so you'll have to use the island's landmarks to find your way. Just like birthday celebrations and riding a seesaw, digging for treasure is much more fun with someone else. And the more of you who help to dig, the faster you'll uncover the bounty. But that's only half the voyage. For the real reward, you need to get the chest back to an outpost and cash it in. So while one pirate hauls the treasure, the others should escort them back to the ship, watching for any sly rivals who would love to score some treasure the easy way. Back on the ship, it's up to you to find a good hiding place for your precious cargo. There's still a chance that some enterprising sea dog will sneak on board and snatch it, but don't make it easy for them. Of course, the seas can be treacherous, and your crew will have to work together to reach a safe haven, fending off rival crews if they get too close. This could be a chance to test your blunderbuss or pistol by boarding their ship to engage in a friendly exchange of ideas. If that doesn't go to plan, you'll be taking a trip to the Ferry of the Damned because, well, you'll be dead. But don't worry too much. If you and your fellow lost souls ask the captain nicely, he might escort you back to the real world and you'll be back in action. So what happens if your whole ship goes down? Well, as luck would have it, some friendly mermaids will be on hand to rescue you and your crew. Because that's what mermaids do, apparently. If, after all this, you eventually get back to an outpost with your ill-gotten gains, head to the shipwright who'll happily exchange it for gold. Well, maybe not happily, but she will exchange it. One quest well and truly smashed. This is just a first glimpse of what's to come in Sea of Thieves, and we look forward to showing you more as we set sail through our technical alpha phase and beyond. Cheers! Every single mechanic's been built to be social. Exactly. Like we, we started with the world map from a co-op perspective. Like. Definitely. We didn't want the person on the wheel to be able to sail the ship and see where they're going on the map and do everything all in one. Splitting it up so that the world map's on the middle deck yeah. is a deliberate decision so that the line of sight is broken, so a crewmate needs to go down there, have a look, shout up to the guy on the wheel like, oh, we need to go north. Yeah. Um, and likewise, not all the information is on the yeah. map either. The person on the wheel has some information and the person on, exactly, the, on the map has other information. Like all, all the kind of rocks and like smaller nuances of the world design, you have to see them like from, from the, the wheel or on the The person on the wheel might not nest. be able to see the, all of the rocks and reefs, so a player in the crow's nest or hanging out exactly. on the front of the ship is going to be able to see that information. Yeah. So you all need to work together to give each other the information yeah. that you need to navigate. I think for me the breakthrough is the map. Like when I think back to when we were first prototyping quests, it was getting the map in, which was just a singular map at the time that only one person could carry and that kind of enforced the social mechanics around looking at it and yeah. showing it to your crew yeah. and I remember the first playtest that we had when like you were showing the map it was awesome it was like when you were physically showing it to them and you were seeing them huddle around you in first person you were like right, we're onto something here like we need to build off this that was the start of it because like the cooperative digging came a lot later actually didn't Much it later, like, yeah. before it was just like a singular person digging yeah so a, sing um, a singular person had the shovel a singular person had the map and basically it meant that people were more like kind of forced into roles which we didn't we didn't want and um, we wanted everyone to have the ability to do any role at any time
online. And that actually just made it um, blossom into being even, even more yeah. social and the best type of social that we wanted because as soon as we gave everyone the shovel, it felt like, well, let's let everybody dig it up together yeah, and it'd be exactly. faster. So when you've got to the, to the treasure and dug it up, um, it doesn't end there because the yeah. minute you dig up that chest... It's only, it's only at risk for a certain amount of time, basically. That, that's the yeah. crucial thing to remember. It's in your hands. If, yeah. you, if you get it back literally. safely, literally, if you get it back safely to an outpost and sell it to the shipwright, that's it then. It's, it's, sure it's banked. It's your, it's your yeah. goal. But once you've dug it up, that's it. Yeah. Um, if there's somebody nearby, if they, if they shoot you, if they kill you, or they overcome you, they can steal that from it's you. It's technically not your goal then, anyway. That's what makes it so tense and so enjoyable for me. You kind of like naturally just designate roles. Like, so, oh, quick, someone protect me, because it's just instinctive to get someone to like follow you with a blunderbuss or with a pistol, or someone might scout ahead a little bit. Or well, I mean, it was a very deliberate design decision to make the, the chest be something that is a shared benefit for the whole crew, yeah. so it's something that you all rally around. Um, it bonds you together and it's something that you all want to protect yeah, together. Exactly. It's great on the other side though as well, like there's nothing better than cashing in a chest, someone else's chest. that was someone else's amazing. hard work. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I think that going on the quest is kind of the culmination of all these uh, cooperative yeah. mechanics where this um, pirate crew is bonded together, going on an adventure together. Yeah, with um, these set of tools that you can yeah. all work together, you can all cooperate, collaborate together. With, to this, with this goal of treasure in mind. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That may be quite funny. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you can hear the wind going through the trees, but yep. the fact that you can actually see things move just that adds to that kind of finished visual. So obviously, crashing in the world, and we've got the ship kind of riding on the waves. So we've got like the ropes swinging in the in the kind of the, the air as it crashes across the waves, and you've got the filling of the ship when obviously you've got a leak on the ship and the water starts to rise. It, it slosh. It feels it like it's sloshing about. about. Yeah. So there's physics within this world. Obviously we're trying to create quite a yeah. and kind of has history and life to it. It takes a lot of work. Yeah. Um, so we need to look at what elements make sense to put time into. We knew we were going to have a pirate kind of bonding together. So it needed to be something that had a sense of kind of joy around it and kind of like creativity. It needed an art style that kind of tied it all together. So we're all gestives rather than actual really tiny granular detail. Uh, and by doing that, we just kind of like pulled a lot of that small detail out yeah. with all this kind of interest and it just didn't get bogged down or heavy. We spend a lot of time looking at actions. Yeah. So you can see that ship on the horizon and it's got that really nice kind of form. And we're doing a lot of things with the distances, like one tone colour. And, and that carried through a lot of things where we're kind of refining our shapes or removing that detail in, in all of those areas. So pushed, because you want all the different characters, shapes and sizes to, to have a different feel to them, to be unique in themselves. Mm. Yes, so it, within our world it was very important. All of these elements that we bring together, it's, yeah. it's, and they create this experience. And when it all does come together, it's all about making this come. There's this big ship with several decks, and you want this to sound different, depending on what happens outside. The water is uh, more creaky, the boat is. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, you almost make the ship feel like it's alive. It's like another character yeah. in the game. April. Just being in the brick deck, and you can hear the ship creaking and the water lapping. I think the, the, so when the cannonball hits the hull and the, the water coming in. For example, if you lower the capstan or the sound of the sails flapping, you want to be enveloped by all of this. We use reality to the audio. Uh, we actually got the ship system and the water system. So where those two come together and they meet down, you are still gently rocking. So we've got sort of a few creeks that play in those sort of conditions. It's come down and the capstan raises. You have bow wash emitters that can spray the bow. And then you've got a general wash of just water displacement. We've also got kind of a wake sound as well. And obviously the crow's nest all the way down to the depths of the ship. You kind of get an audio journey putting all those together. Sailing, or they're fighting, or they're drinking, or they're camaraderie in a crew. We want to kind of give players all of rival dens. So it's almost like rival crews on the ship. That's what adventure is in this game. It's just, just island hopping, or, or just kind of sailing wherever you want, kind of either following a map or not following a map, or just kind of doing what you like. 
it's this player sales on the horizon, it's another player or another group of players, and you don't know what they want. I mean, players. If players want to go adventuring in that world on their own, that's definitely a kind of um, a possibility for those. Nobody, sometimes you might see another ship, sometimes you might come across two or more ships in, in, at one time, I think. Yeah. I think focused on creating compelling cooperative mechanics that could bond players together in an intuitive and immersive way. Working together in dynamic forces within the world that players can take advantage of by raising and lowering their sails and angling them into the wind. Really immersive. So we consciously avoided things like crosshairs on screen because we wanted you to feel We've been adventuring on an island, we've seen another ship, we've all dashed back, we've got on the anchor together, we've worked together on the sails to angle them into the wind. Bars of the game. Yeah, we did research on what other people were doing, uh, yeah. we looked really good. Yeah, all those different layers from, from, your, from yourself or from the rendering team, light behaves when it hits it. Yeah, so obviously the, we needed to make the water look good, at, so we've got great looking sunsets where yeah. you see the reflections and all the sparkles on the yeah. water. Yeah, and I think it's great, isn't it? Because you can, you can start in the see. morning just as kind of nighttime finishes. Yeah. Just on the surface of the water, you know, right, it's going to get a bit brighter now, sun's going to come. Kind of read the time of day almost ahead of time if you look at the water. See? Yeah, yeah. Because, of course, if you're having a, like a naval battle, then you can't have different ships that are bobbing up and down at different time. And yep. So we can just synchronise that between players and then they can reproduce exactly the same thing. On bays than it is in the kind of out to the yeah. rough oceans. You've kind of got different simulations uh, that you have to consider, like around much more like a pond. And then you've yep. got deep ocean where the waves can be several metres high that can really rock a big yeah. ship around. Stylized, but still behaves like water. Yeah, and I think that's a trick, isn't it? Because it looks, but everyone that sees it says how real it looks. Mm. And it's, it's, a really nice, it's a really nice blend that we managed to keep some with our game and, and kind of keep the style that we want. Hi, everybody. Oh, hello. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> Stay back. Stay back. Ye foul beast. There we go. See? That's so cool. Help me out. There, more people can do the anchor thing. Nom 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 nom. The main mast sails still need to go down. Oh, I, they're down, they're down, they're down. We're sailing! Dude, which island are you going to? Which island? The farthest one in the distance. <laughs> are, we, are we emptying it? <laughs> 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 this was the best idea. I don't know, I can usually walk a straighter line than this. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, you guys. Oh, okay. Oh, no. You're going to hit that rock. You're going to hit that rock. I think it's going to be too tight. Just go. Just go. No, no, no. No, you're going to sink us. You're going to sink us. Oh, I found the captain's quarters. This is mine. Mine. Okay, so the sail's blocking my vision, so you're going to need to tell me where to steer. I'm looking at the water, Chad. Shut up. Guys. Guys. we got to get up. Go, go to the boat, go to the boat. Oh my god! Oh, oh no! Crazy anchor, set the sail! You're leaving me behind! No! Woo! Oh, they're right on top! Oh, oh no! No! Whoa! <laughs> Alright, man the cannon! They're shooting back! Uh, we're sinking. Oh, dude, it's, we're gonna drown. It's water down here. What do we do? What do we do? I don't know. Bail, 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 bail. We're screwed. We sank up, yeah! <laughs> no! There's a ship to the left, to the left. Oh my god. They're going down, yeah! <laughs> Let's go!